A very good early Saturday morning to everybody and welcome to this first of two videos on this Saturday the 29th of November. Big one coming up tomorrow. It is the live stream. It is the winter forecast for 25-26. There will also be a video later on this evening regarding the flooding that has been ongoing across Southeast Asia as well. But yes, I'm coming to you this early hour of Saturday morning thanks to the fact that we have a technical SSW, a very rare occurrence for the month of November. The winds within the 10 millibar level have technically reversed and you can see that quite clearly in this ECM zonal mean wind graphic here. Um, we are going to see a recovery, but... Uh, and it also looks as if this is staying in reverse. So winds coming in, very slack winds coming in out of an easterly direction as opposed to a westerly direction. You do not see this very often indeed, folks. But it uh, is um, it's what this could be telling us for later down the road that might be more of interest. Uh, certainly folks here in Western Europe, due to the fact that this is a reflective type of warming, and therefore it uh, is more likely to favour North America in terms of Arctic outbreaks as we move into at least the first half of December compared to here in Europe. But uh, like I say, the winds have reversed. They've went from westly to eastly at 10 millibars within the stratosphere. Another way of looking at this is this. This is the 10 millibar temperature and anomalies. And you've got this strong warming that has been ongoing over the last few days. Warming up the stratosphere at 10 millibars and uh, dislodging the polar vortex. You can see here, this is a, a nice little um, discussion here from Extreme Media showing the that, technically speaking, we have faced today a, a major sudden stratosphere warming or, or a minor sudden stratosphere warming, should I say. Sorry, I do apologize. This is a minor stratosphere warming and the reasons why it will likely be a minor as opposed to a major is the fact that the mean zonal wind is probably going to only reverse for less than a 24 hour period but they go on to say that the consequences are concentrated on north american cold arctic outbreaks um, as opposed to uh, for for europe uh, the reflective nature of the stratospheric warming with simply a displacement or stretching of the vortex conversely favours zonal flow over the Atlantic with concerns for Europe. Note that the reflective waves in connection with this warming should fade away around December 10th or 6th, should I say? I can't read properly. So a fine demonstration that a sudden stratosphere warming does not necessarily translate into a cold snap for us and they're basically referring to uh, to Europe. Uh, so therefore, no need to overdo it with uh, these phenomena on a daily basis, uh, which are often misunderstood by many uh, who go overboard with them. So yes, we have seen a technical SSW of the minor type, and it is likely to favour north america but if we go back to the mean zonal wind forecast of the ecmwf you can see here that we do see uh an increase in the westerly winds yet again but then a deceleration a further deceleration in the winds sometime between the 20th and 30th of december now this may not happen but uh, it's interesting nonetheless that we are seeing this uh this deceleration in the mean zonal winds if we look at the gfs model here you can see that quite nicely the secondary wave of warming showing up here now we see the pv regroup reposition back over the top of the pole yet again as we move towards the middle of the month uh, with warming surrounding that vortex then we've got another renewed burst of warming initially developing in a, in a similar place to what we've seen this time around with warming showing up over uh, over siberia crossing over the top of the pole, again leaning more in the North American side of the pole, which is something I don't like to see in terms of cold uh, and, and blo blocking more towards the North Atlantic and Greenland. I tend to want to see more of that warming leaning more towards the top of the pole and down into Greenland and the North Atlantic here. That tends to be where you reflect the heights within the troposphere 
um, with the stratosphere. Um, and, you know, when you've got this kind of situation where you've got low heights or cold temperatures uh, over the UK and to the north, that sometimes leads more to cold outbreaks in the North America, but actually that continued active Atlantic jet, that zonal jet that drives mild Atlantic air into western areas of Europe here. So we're still seeing elements here of, of concern, but the, this could be what is happening right at the minute could actually be the building blocks to something bigger as we move through the month of December. But certainly in terms of temperature anomalies through the next day, um, the next seven days, we are seeing an Arctic outbreak in the North America, as can be seen here. You can see the cold here. This is quite a flip around, actually, in North America uh, compared to recent times. Um, but you can see here, cold North America. But if we look across the Atlantic to Europe, we've got generally warmer than average. Yeah, we've got a little bit of cold than average here and there. But uh, generally speaking, uh, it's a big difference here between uh, from one side of the Atlantic to the other. This is the North American view over the next seven days. And we're going to see further lobes of Arctic air getting driven out of the Arctic into eastern and central North America. That is going to continue to increase the strength of the jet over the Atlantic and throw systems our way. But uh, just what thought I would come to you on this early Saturday morning to declare the fact that we have seen a, a an SSW of the reflective type. Also another important element before I forget is the MJO, which is in favorable phases for blocking within the high latitude. So Arctic, North Atlantic, Greenland, you know, favors a, a, a negative AO, NAO situation, it has to be said. But this, what is going on within the stratosphere is possibly, uh, you know, suppressing the influence of this MJO. Strong upward motion, strong vertical uh, upward motion within the western portion of the Pacific. It could be getting suppressed due to the what's going on within the stratosphere. But once we start to see momentum uh, decrease within the Northern Hemispheric circulation, the influence of this Phase 7 MJO, so we're already now in Phase 7, and a highly amplified Phase 7 of that, by the way. Look at this here. Look at how far out the lines are away from the inner circle. The further out the lines are from the inner circle, the stronger the influence this has on the atmosphere. And like I've said for some time now, the two are working against one another. But once we see changes take place within the stratosphere, I think the MJO is going to take over the tropospheric pattern. And therefore, we may begin to start to see the pattern shift. That's why there's a big golden question mark over the back half of December uh, with regards to the pattern. I'm not ruling out the fact that they, you know, we're, you know, we're just going to see this warm, wet, windy December. I certainly think that we've got a uh, highly Atlantic driven first half of the December, but I think we could well see the MJO grab hold of the atmosphere, the northern hemispheric circulation as we move towards mid to late December. And what could be triggering that secondary burst of warming, deceleration of the mean zonal winds within the stratosphere might be actually due to this MJO being in phase seven. Um and the two then, instead of working against one another, may actually work together to generate the pattern that many of us want to see cold and uh, and, and blocking. Uh, you know, the angular momentum is actually quite strong at the minute. It is forecast to, to uh, slow down. And, you know, when you've got this weak polar vortex, MJO phase seven, and a slowdown of, uh, of angular momentum, that is when you tend to find pressure building up into the higher latitude uh, system so um let's very quickly look at the the pattern for the month of you know let's look at the seven day increments here in terms of the upper heights and see what it's shown here from a northern hemispheric viewpoint so if we play through again another aspect to consider is the, the pattern over the Pacific. We've got a, a positive PNA signal at the moment here. 
So this is what you've got going at the minute. You've got this strong high pressure system over the Gulf of Alaska. We've got this cross polar flow. We've got the deep trough extending from uh, Hudson Bay down towards the southeast United States. That's driving, that's creating an avenue, a channel, when you've got this ridge over Alaska, negative over Hudson Bay, you're creating a channel for a cross polar connection, essentially pulling cold from Siberia across the top of the pole and into North America. But look at how flat the, the, the flow is over the Atlantic. You've got uh, an elongated stretched out ridge of high pressure through the middle latitudes and over the higher latitudes of the Atlantic, you've got a very flat nature, strong jet and a strong area of low pressure connecting North America with the UK. But uh, you notice here that we do not have positive heights over Greenland. So therefore, that is a mild Atlantic driven flow. Now, if we play through here over the next couple of weeks or so here, we are beginning to start to see changes showing up here. You notice here that we start to split away this zonality and we're starting to see the breaking apart of that and therefore lobes of warmer air ascending up into the higher latitude pattern here. And this could be triggered by the MJO phase 7 and, you know, one's handing off from the other. The, the stratosphere is handing off to the MJO. The MJO is taking over. The MJO then... Uh, creates that the uh, renewed influence from troposphere up into the stratosphere here. So it's a complex interplay, but hopefully, if you're a lover of cold and snow like I am, let's hope that this pans out the way it does. I've got niggles, I've got concerns, I've had quite a stressful week in terms of building these ideas in the run-up to the winter forecast, which will be all unveiled in tomorrow's live stream. So join with that. Watch the uh, the global weather report later on this afternoon, and uh, and yeah, enjoy your Saturday and weekend. Bye for now.